The Premier League season is about to start. It's Premier League week. It's a very exciting time. There's been a lot of transfers, a lot of changes managerially. And it's just going to be a great season. There's a lot of teams that are going to be contending near the top of the league. And it's actually quite weak towards the back end. There's a lot of weak teams that could be in for a tough season. So, without further ado, let's get into my predictions for this year's Premier League table. And starting off in 20th, there's not many teams that come up from the Championship and end up with a weaker squad in the Premier League. However, this looks like the case for Sheffield United. They've sold Illiman Ndiaye to Marseille. Sander Berger looks to be moving to another team that's just came up, which is Burnley. So Sheffield United have now got a weaker squad than they did in the Championship. And in the Championship, yes, they finished second. I don't think they were highly impressive. I just think other than Burnley, there weren't many top teams. So, you know, with a lot of surprises last year in the Championship, Sheffield United managed to be the second best team. I think they go straight back down here. Whether it's bottom, I'm not sure. But for me, I will go Sheffield United rock bottom in 20th. And it's not a great start for the newly promoted sides, as in 19th, I'm going to go for Luton Town. Now, I think they'll finish higher than Sheffield United because I think their style of play suits the Premier League more. They're not going to go all out trying to attack teams. They are going to sit back. They're going to be really scrappy. They're a physical side. And at home, that atmosphere is something the Premier League probably hasn't experienced before. Such a tight little stadium. So I've got a feeling that Luton will be able to get some points at home, some positive results, but ultimately not enough to keep them up. They have signed to Heath Chong from Blues. They've got Elijah Adebayo up front anyway, who had a brilliant season last year. So I'm going to go Luton, not to finish bottom, but not enough to stay up. Luton in 19th. However, it's not going to be all three newly promoted sides. In 18th, I'm doing it again, like I did last year, Everton. Now, I know last year I said it, under Lampard they would have got relegated. Deutsch came in and steadied the ship, didn't do amazingly, but he got results when it mattered. And ultimately, there were three worse teams than them. They did survive on the final day by the skin of their teeth, but I don't see it happening again. They don't have any strikers really. Calvert Lewin's always injured. Ellis Sims has been sold. They're stuck with Neil Mor Morpe. Damari Gray, who is one of their better attacking players, who is never utilised, he looks to be on the way to Fulham. And I just don't see any standout players in this side. Onana's okay. Iwobi's okay. Are they good enough to lift them out of a relegation battle? I don't think so. And this is the year I think Everton finally go down. Just surviving, I'm going to go for Wolves. Now, Wolves are in a bit of a tricky situation. It looks like they've taken out a £100 million loan. Their owners are really struggling financially to fund anything to do with the club. Which seems to happen to a lot of the West Midlands sides, as I would know, and West Brom fans would know. Julian Lopetegui looks like he could be on the way out, as he's not getting the money that he was promised, which is understandable. It looks like Gary O'Neill may come in. I can't believe he lost his job at Bournemouth, but I think that would be a pretty smart appointment if Lopetegui was to walk, because he will make them defensively sound. The reason I'm keeping them up is that they do have some players that I believe can make a difference. Yes, they've lost Ruben Neves, but Pedro Neto, when he's fit, is a brilliant impact player. They've got Goncalo Guedes, who although he hasn't set the Premier League alight, He's a player with a lot of quality. He was in the Portugal setup. I think that he can bring a lot of quality. Huang He Chan as well, another good player that pops up with goals. So it was really a toss of a coin, but I've got Wolves staying up in 17th. In 16th, I'm going for West Ham. Now, a lot of the fans are unhappy with their owners. They've just won the Europa Conference League. However, Declan Rice is now gone. They haven't yet replaced him. They're looking to get him McTominay in, who I don't think is anywhere near a replacement for Rice. He's a different kind of player. He's not going to do everything that Rice can. And other than Lucas Paqueta, 
and Jared Bowen, there doesn't seem to be too much exciting quality in this side. Not too many goals. Scamacca looks to be on his way back to Italy as well. So it's going to be down to Mikel Antonio again. Unless Ings starts firing. So West Ham are really looking like a squad that are going to be down there again. They also do have the strain of Europa League football, which could cause another similar season to last year. In 15th, I'm going to go for the side that kind of defied all odds last year, Bournemouth. Now, they obviously started poorly, but Gary O'Neill took over as the assistant, did an amazing job last year to keep them out of a relegation battle. If they'd have been in one and survived, that would have been a great season, but they were nowhere near relegation all season since Gary O'Neill took over. But then he got sacked and they've brought in Iraola, Spanish manager. He looks very exciting. I think it was harsh on Gary O'Neill, but if it was mutual consent and that's not the way they're looking to go, fair enough. I just can't believe we're going into a Premier League season and after last year, Gary O'Neill isn't a Premier League manager. Now, Bournemouth are a bit more financially stable than they have been previously in the Premier League. I think they do have a decent squad that can play a very strong way in the Premier League. You know, they kind of play one way, but it works. And I've got a feeling that they are going to survive again this season. So Bournemouth, 15th place. Nottingham Forest had a good season last year, and that's why I'm putting them 14th. Awanyi and Gibbs White for me were the highlights of Nottingham Forest season. They were brilliant going forward and scored and assisted vital goals to keep them up. Especially Awanyi in that purple patch towards the back end of the season. Very, very strong indeed. And they've added Anthony Alanga to the attacking attackingness of this team. So I like that signing. I think Alanga could have got into a lot of teams in this in this league. But He's gone to Nottingham Forest, and I think it's a great pickup for a, a relatively low fee. I think he'll be very good, and I think Forest will survive comfortably. So, Forest in 14th. In 13th, might be a little bit too high, but I'm excited about Burnley this year. It's a different Burnley than we've seen last time in the Premier League under Sean Deutsch. Vincent Company is going to bring some interesting attacking football to the league in a reinvented Burnley side that have been spending a fair bit of money this transfer window looks like they're going to get Sander Berg as well from Sheffield United I'm liking the way their squad's going I'm liking their attack I do think that they would like to get Nathan Teller again he was brilliant for them last season if they could get a hold of him that would be great but I'm not sure it will happen they seem to have a lot of wingers at the moment. I've seen Burnley fans saying they want to sign some central players because there's so many wingers. But they've got a lot of options. They've got some versatile players. And I think Vincent Company is going to bring an excitement to Burnley in the Premier League this time around. So I go for Burnley in 13th. In 12th place, I will go for Fulham. They've brought in Calvin Bassey of... Very exciting defender, still very young from Ajax. I think that's a very good signing for them. They're looking at bringing Damari Gray in as well from Everton. I, as a Blues fan, obviously love Damari Gray. I think he's a great, great player. And, I mean, he's kind of proven it. He just never seems to get a look in, even though he always comes up with brilliant moments of quality. I think Fulham will have another good year under Marco Silva. However... They have lost Mitrovic to the Saudi league. That is a big, big player to replace. They've got Carlos Vinicius, who looks like, again, another good striker. But can he fill the boots of Mitrovic? It'll be a difficult one. However, I think Fulham will have another good season. So I'm going to put them in 12th. In 11th place, they may have lost their man, but... A new man can become Mr. Crystal Palace. Eberieze, for me, is a brilliant, brilliant player. A lot of people know his quality. And he was shining last season, especially towards the back end. If you keep him fit, he will be a brilliant player 
and carry Crystal Palace forward. Wilfred Zaha has gone to Galatasaray. Obviously, it's a loss, but with Eze, Elise, and Brazilian wonder kid Matias Franca just signed from Flamengo, I think they have a brilliant attacking midfield slash wingers all there together. Maybe they could do with a striker still, but Eduard, Mateta, you know, they can do a job. They've also strengthened defensive mid with Jefferson Lerma in the door. Roy Hodgson will be there for stability. I think Palace will have a decent season. I'm putting them 11th. Breaking into the top 10, a team that were there last season, I'm going to go for Brentford. Now, I think they are going to have a very strong season, even though Ivan Tony will be unavailable until January due to suspension for his gambling. However, Brian and Burmo, brilliant player, chips in with plenty of goals. Wisser as well there. I think they have got goals in this side. They've also signed Kevin Sharder, who was there on loan last year. They've made that permanent. He will be a great player for them again. I think they've got a great attack. Brentford always strong under Thomas Frank. They've also brought in Nathan Collins at the back from Wolves. I think he will really help out defensively. They've also they've got some good defenders there already, but you know it's just reinforcement. Flecken as well, a goalkeeper they've brought in. David Raya looks to be on his way to Arsenal, which is obviously a big loss, but hopefully Flecken can fill that gap. I think Brentford will have a good season in 10th place. In 9th, and I was tempted to have them lower, I'm going for Spurs. Now this might be a surprise because 9th seems like a big drop off for a team that are a big six side, but I think they're going in the wrong direction. Postacoglu comes in the door, he I think he's a good manager but the last time a manager that did well in Scotland came to England was Steven Gerrard and he stunk the place out at Villa. Now I think Postacoglu will do a better job than him but I think he's going to the wrong team because Tottenham they're trending downwards, if Harry Kane leaves they will finish much lower than this. James Madison a good signing, Mickey van der Ven again a defender good signing. But I'm just not convinced that their squad is that strong. And I think if Kane goes, they are in a world of trouble. So Tottenham might seem harsh, might seem a bit optimistic. But I'm going ninth. The next three teams I feel I could have put in any order. But eighth place, I'm going for Brighton. Now, they've lost McAllister and Robert Sanchez. They're the two big losses. They've still got Saucedo for the moment. They've brought in João Pedro, who I think will be a brilliant signing for them. They've got Verbruggen, who will be in goal to replace Sanchez from Anderlecht. Mahmoud Dahoud comes in. Igor comes in. James Milner comes in. Again, a very experienced central midfielder who's very versatile, so a good player to have around the camp. And I think Brighton are getting great profiles in They've probably got about six youngsters we've never heard of that are going to have great seasons. They've still obviously got Evan Ferguson and CISO, Buonanotte, Mitoma. There's so many brilliant players at Brighton and I think they could get even higher than this. I'm not sure they'll finish lower than this to be honest. Brighton may be slightly harsh but I'm going for 8th place. The next team I could have put anywhere from 6th to 8th so I've went in the middle, 7th place. Aston Villa. Now they have had a brilliant year last year. Emery came in, did an incredible job. Since he was in, they would be third in the league. So that shows how great of a job he did. And they've brought in some exciting players. Tillemans comes in on a free. What a deal that is. Moussa Diaby, fast, exciting winger, brilliant dribbling and end product. And centre back, Pau Torres, another great sign in going to give them a lot of stability at the back. They've just got so many good players at the moment. They're building a great project. I think 7th place is pretty fair for them, but they could get higher. I don't think they're going to get near the top 4, but Europa League is a possibility. 
And I think it's going to be a great season for Villa, especially with them being in the Europa Conference League, which on paper looks like a competition that they should really go all the way in. So it's going to be a great season for Villa. Let's see how they get on, but I've got them in 7th. In 6th place, I'm going for Newcastle. Now, they obviously finished in the Champions League last year, and they have made some improvements to their squad. However, I think the toll of playing Champions League football, plus the fact that a lot of teams that finish below them have strengthened more than them, I'd say, means that they kind of drop into sixth for me, which is still a good season with the Champions League football as well. Now, they've got rid of St. Maximin. He's gone to the Saudi League. He was such an exciting player to watch, but he was very injury prone and his end product wasn't always there. They've replaced him with Harvey Barnes. I think that is a brilliant, brilliant signing because he might not seem as exciting, but he guarantees goals and assists. He's much more reliable. They've also brought in Sandro Tonali from AC Milan, brilliant defensive midfielder, and Livramento from Southampton, I'm guessing to play as understudy to Trippier. Newcastle, with all this, I'm going to go sixth place. Just missing out on the top four, I'm going for Liverpool. However, with the new Champions League format, that will mean that they will get Champions League football next year due to a coefficient. Now, Liverpool have had a very interesting summer as they have really ripped their midfield out and bought new players. Fabinho and Jordan Henderson both go along with Naby Keita and Oxlade Chamberlain and Milner, and they've brought in Alexis McAllister and Dominic Soboslai. Now, these two are brilliant players, not too defensive, but brilliant players going forward, very creative, which there's always been the argument about Liverpool that their midfield hasn't been creative for the last kind of five years. They don't chip in with many goals or assists. They've got that now, but they do need someone to hold the fort in midfield, especially with them playing such a high line. They will get a lot of teams getting in behind them if they don't get a strong defensive midfielder and they're after Romeo Lavia at the moment. I think if they bring him in that they will finish anywhere between fifth and third but for me I will go Liverpool in fifth just because there's so many changes in their midfield. In fourth place I'm going for Man United. Now the notable loss is David De Gea. Yes he did make the odd mistake here and there but a brilliant servant to the club. So many clean sheets and appearances. They've replaced him with Champions League finalist Andre Onana. I think that's a great, great signing because his distribution is brilliant. He is the modern day goalkeeper, whereas De Gea wasn't too great at that stuff. They've also brought in Mason Mount, who I'd imagine would sit next to Casemiro with Fernandez in front of them. That is a very good midfield because Mount can go box to box. He's that, that midfielder that they've really been looking for now. And up front, Rasmus Hoyland, 19-year-old striker. Not too many goals in his debut season in Italy with Atalanta last year. But there'll be more to come. He's a great link-up player. I think he's going to be great. And he's a long-term solution to Man United's striker troubles. For those reasons, I'm going Man United in fourth. You may have been wondering why I'm this far into this video and I haven't said Chelsea yet. But for me, I'm going third. And this may be the stupidest prediction of this video. Or it may be absolutely amazing. I've just got a feeling about Chelsea this year. They are a bit light in midfield. They've basically lost all of their midfielders. However, they are after Saicedo. If they get him, they will be so strong in midfield. They probably do need one or probably two centre mids, but they're playing career mode this year, and Kunku will be brilliant. Nicholas Jackson has looked amazing in pre-season for goals and assists. They've also got Mudrick, who has looked great in pre-season as well. De Sassi comes in from Monaco, a centre-back. Angelo, an exciting winger from Brazil. They are just signing so many exciting players, and... I can't explain why I'm going for this, but I've just got a really strong feeling that Chelsea will return to the top four this season and 
really be hard to beat. Robert Sanchez comes in in goal as well. I, I think that's a brilliant goalkeeper signing, great distribution. So I'm going for Chelsea in third. The top two is very, very tight. But I'm going to go for Arsenal again here. I think they've got all the potential to win the league. I just think whilst Pep Guardiola is at Man City, he will constantly grind out Premier Leagues with them because he's such a good manager with a very, very strong squad. Now, Arsenal, they've got some brilliant players. Obviously, Saka, Martinelli on the wings, Jesus up front. They've added Havertz to this side. I think he'll be very good for them. I think he was very expensive, but I think he'll be a great signing. Declan Rice as a defensive mid. Brilliant, brilliant signing. And someone not many people are talking about. Centre-back slash right-back from Ajax, Jurian Timber. Another brilliant signing. They've added so much depth to this squad now with those signings. And I think, to be honest, Arsenal, I wouldn't be surprised if they did win the league. I think they'll definitely be top two. But just at the moment, purely down to Pep Guardiola, I've got to go for Arsenal in second. I do think they'll win a trophy, however. So, Man City to win the league for me. They've signed two Croatian players, Kovacic from Chelsea and Josko Gvardiol from Leipzig. A great defensive signing. You know, he is one of the most spoken about defenders in the world for potential. And they've managed to get their hands on him. I think he's going to be an absolute beast for them. They have lost Mares to the Saudi League. And the main one for me is Gundogan going on a free transfer to Barcelona. It was kind of mutual consent. He wanted a new challenge. He was the captain last year in their treble winning season. And Gundogan, for me, will be one of those players that in five, ten years' time will be, you know, one that might be forgotten, but is an absolute legend. What he has done at Man City has been incredible. The amount of clutch goals he's came up with, winning them games, trophies. Gundogan is just a brilliant, brilliant player. And I think he's always kind of been under underappreciated until last season. For me, with Pep Guardiola at the helm, they might be due to lose a few more, but I've got to go for Man City to win the league. So, those are my predictions for this Premier League season. What do you think? Who do you think will win the league? Give me your predictions down below. If you don't want to do a full table, just go for top four and the three relegated sides. I think it's going to be a very interesting season, very excited. I love Man City, but I kind of hope that there's even more of a challenge, maybe another final day conclusion. But I think they will end up doing it again, probably doing another treble knowing them because they're so, so strong. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 500 subscribers by the end of the season. The grind is going to continue, so if you think some of your friends might like this content, if you're not yet subscribed, then share with your friends and subscribe to the channel. I hope you all enjoy the season, 